In the golden age of British trucking, one engine promised to redefine power, performance, and prestige, but instead, it sparked disaster. Imagine a V8 diesel that captivated an entire industry, hailed as Britain's ultimate heavyweight contender, only to crumble spectacularly when reality struck. How could a mighty creation from AEC, a titan of British engineering, fall so rapidly from hero to zero? Get ready as we unravel the gripping saga of ambition, rivalry, and heartbreaking failure. The astonishing rise and catastrophic collapse of the AEC V8. In the optimistic industrial landscape of late 1960s Britain, manufacturers believed bigger was better. AEC, buoyed by decades of success with their reliable workhorses like the Mandator and Mammoth Major, sought to cement its dominance by introducing something unprecedented. Their bold vision? The AV800, a monstrous 800 cubic inch V8 diesel powerhouse that would, they hoped, leave rivals in the dust. On paper, this engine was a technological marvel. Delivering a hefty 247 horsepower, it promised the torque and performance required to conquer Britain's increasingly demanding haulage conditions. It wasn't just about raw power. The AV800 smooth delivery in that deep, distinctive exhaust note added to its allure. Early tests and demonstrations impressed operators and journalists alike. For a fleeting moment, it seemed AEC had cracked the code for future-proofing British trucking. AEC didn't hold back on the marketing either. The AV800 was hyped as a game-changer, an engine that would haul heavier loads faster and more efficiently, giving fleet operators an undeniable edge. It was aimed at ambitious hauliers looking to stay ahead of the curve in an increasingly competitive market. Expectations soared, but behind the fanfare, cracks quietly began to form. The rush development timeline, mounting resource constraints, and internal management pressures meant that some engineering corners were inevitably cut. Beneath the confident exterior, the AV800 was not as bulletproof as promised. The seeds of trouble were sown even before the first engines rolled off the production line, and this was just the beginning. Stick around, because up next we'll reveal the hidden flaws that turned this promising powerhouse into one of British trucking's most infamous disasters. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying this. Once the AV800 hit Britain's roads, the initial excitement surrounding its power and innovation quickly gave way to harsh realities. What began as admiration for its raw strength soon turned to frustration, as drivers and fleet operators encountered a string of serious technical issues. The V8's mighty torque was undeniable, but so were its flaws. Overheating became a common nightmare, often occurring under heavy load or on long hauls, leaving vehicles stranded and operators facing costly delays. Rapid oil consumption added to the mounting concerns, with operators forced to top up far more frequently than expected. This, combined with crankshaft failures and premature wear of vital components, eroded confidence in the engine's reliability. The intricate design, so promising in theory, proved a major obstacle in practice. Servicing the AV800 was no easy task. It demanded specialized tools and expertise that many workshops lacked, driving up repair costs and prolonging downtime. For fleet managers, the dream of increased efficiency turned into a logistical headache. The constant maintenance, breakdowns, and parts replacements meant that any performance advantages were swiftly outweighed by financial and operational setbacks. As word of these struggles spread across the haulage industry, potential buyers grew cautious. The AV800's reputation began to tarnish, leaving AEC grappling with falling orders and growing skepticism. While these technical troubles weighed heavily, there were other forces at play. Beyond the workshop floor, the economic landscape and intensifying competition would soon deliver further blows to AEC's ambitious project, setting the stage for challenges no engineering fix could overcome. As the AEC V8 grappled with its mechanical demons, broader economic forces began to tighten the noose. By the early 1970s, Britain was deep in the grip of economic uncertainty. Inflation soared, fuel prices spiked, and operators across the country felt the pinch. In this harsh climate, priorities shifted. Fleet owners no longer had the luxury of chasing raw power or innovation for its own sake. Instead, they sought engines that offered reliability, efficiency, and lower running costs qualities the AV800 struggled to provide. AEC's thirsty V8 clashed badly with this new economic reality. What had once seemed like an ambitious, forward-thinking engine now felt out a step with the times. Rising diesel prices made its fuel consumption a painful liability, while its maintenance needs drained already stretched budgets. Meanwhile, proven inline engines from Gardner and Leyland offered the very virtues fleet operators now craved – simplicity, reliability, and economy. These engines weren't flashy, but they kept businesses moving and profits intact. As more operators turned to these trusted alternatives, AEC's position weakened rapidly. 
orders for the V8 dwindled, and what was once hailed as a bold step forward became a symbol of costly miscalculation. The AV800, born from ambition, now stood as a reminder of the risks of pushing innovation at the wrong time. But while domestic competitors undercut AEC's efforts, the challenge didn't end there. Powerful foreign rivals were also making their mark, delivering engines that not only met but exceeded the expectations of Britain's hauliers, adding yet another layer of pressure to AEC's faltering plans. As if domestic competition weren't enough, the AEC V8 found itself outclassed by powerful foreign rivals that were reshaping Britain's trucking landscape. At the forefront was Scania's V8, an engine introduced around the same time but with a very different legacy. Where the AV800 faltered, Scania's offering excelled. It delivered robust performance, admirable fuel economy, and crucially, reliability that operators could count on. The Scania V8 didn't just match expectations, it exceeded them earning the trust of hauliers across Europe and beyond. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, American giants like Cummins were making their mark with engines that combined power with practicality. Their proven inline-six diesels were rugged, fuel-efficient, and significantly easier to maintain. Fleet managers valued these qualities, especially at a time when downtime meant lost income and rising costs. Cummins engines were renowned for their durability and straightforward servicing, everything the AV800 was not. When placed side-by-side side in real-world operations, the AEC V8 simply could not compete. It consumed more fuel, broke down more often, and cost more to repair. The advantages it once promised were overshadowed by these glaring weaknesses. Fleet operators, faced with tightening margins and growing pressure to stay competitive, saw little sense in gambling on a British design that had already proven unreliable when foreign alternatives were delivering consistent, dependable performance. Against this backdrop of superior competition, the AV800's decline was all but inevitable. Yet even as AEC's ambitious V8 faded from fleets, its story wasn't over. In time, what began as a symbol of failure would find unexpected admiration from a very different crowd, one that saw value not in practicality, but in history, rarity, and bold engineering spirit. With the AV800's commercial failure sealed, one might assume that it would quietly disappear into obscurity. Yet over the years, a remarkable transformation took place. What the haulage industry rejected, vintage truck enthusiasts and collectors came to cherish, not for its practicality, but for its bold ambition and unique place in Britain's engineering story. Decades after the last AV left the factory, these engines began to resurface at classic truck rallies and restoration workshops. Collectors were drawn to the AV800's rarity, distinctive character, and the challenge it presented. Restoring an AEC V8 wasn't easy. Many of the same complexities that plagued operators in the 1970s still made restoration projects daunting. But for enthusiasts, this was part of the appeal. Every rebuilt engine became a tribute to British innovation, and every preserved lorry a rolling reminder of a daring attempt to push boundaries. The AV800's unmistakable exhaust note, a deep, throaty roar unlike any other British lorry of its era, only added to its allure. For collectors, it wasn't about what the engine could haul today. It was about preserving a piece of industrial history and celebrating the spirit of experimentation that, despite its flaws, made the AV800 truly special. In classic truck shows and vintage haulage events, these restored V8s now draw admiring crowds, sparking conversations between generations about an engine that dared to be different. The AV800's legacy has shifted, from cautionary tale to cult icon. Of course, while collectors embraced the AV800's quirks, the broader story of AEC and its V8 would conclude on a much quieter, more somber note, one that marked the end of an era for British lorry manufacturing. While collectors gave the AV800 a second life, its impact on AEC's fortunes during its production years were far less forgiving. The damage had already been done. The engine's failure had tarnished AEC's reputation, strained customer relationships, and drained precious resources at a time when the company could least afford it. As the 1970s progressed, AEC found itself increasingly sidelined in a fiercely competitive market. British Leyland, under whose banner AEC now operated, faced mounting financial difficulties across its divisions. Cost-cutting became a priority, and underperforming products and facilities were firmly in the firing line. The AV800 was quietly withdrawn from production, its promise of a bold new future for British trucking reduced to a footnote in the company's increasingly troubled history. By 1979, the end came not just for the engine, but for AEC itself. The company's iconic Southall factory, once a proud symbol of British industrial strength, fell silent. Its closure marked the final chapter for a manufacturer that had once stood as the heart of Britain's commercial vehicle industry. The fall of AEC reflected more than just the failure of a single engine. It symbolized the broader struggles of British manufacturing in an era of economic upheaval and global competition. 
And yet, the story doesn't end with shuttered factories and faded logos. Even in closure, the AV-800 left a legacy, one that collectors, historians, and enthusiasts continue to preserve, ensuring that AEC's bold, if flawed vision remains part of Britain's rich engineering heritage. While the AV-800's commercial journey ended in disappointment, the full story of this ambitious engine isn't written solely in production figures or sales charts. To truly understand its rise and fall, we need to look beyond the machines and hear from the people who lived through it. Behind every engineering marvel or misstep are the people who brought it to life. In the case of the AV-800, the voices of those who worked on it reveal a story far more complex than a simple mechanical failure. Former AEC engineers speak of immense pressure as the company raced to beat foreign rivals. Many recall raising concerns about reliability and rush testing, only to see their warnings brushed aside by management eager to deliver a game-changer at any cost. On the factory floor, workers describe assembly lines plagued by complexity. The AV-800's intricate design demanded precision and tools that weren't always available. Improvisation became the norm just to keep production moving, with employees often aware that these compromises would haunt the engine on the road. Yet, despite the frustrations, a sense of pride lingers. Those involved remember the AV-800 not only as a flawed product, but as a daring attempt to innovate during challenging times. Their accounts remind us that behind every machine lies human ambition, an ambition that sometimes soars and sometimes stumbles. The AV-800 story, seen through their eyes, becomes less about failure and more about the courage to try. The tale of the AEC V8 is one of daring ambition, technical brilliance, and humbling failure. A reminder that even the boldest innovations can falter when timing, execution, and circumstance collide. AEC set out to redefine British trucking, aiming to deliver a powerhouse that would stand tall against rising foreign competition and lead the industry into a new era. But instead, the AV-800 became a case study in how engineering dreams can be undone by rush development, economic shifts, and formidable rivals. Yet, looking back, it's clear that the AEC V8 was far more than just a failed engine. It was a symbol of British industry's willingness to push boundaries, to take risks in the face of mounting pressures. And while it fell short in the commercial world, its spirit lives on, not just in preserved vehicles and restored engines, but in the admiration of those who respect what it tried to achieve. The distinctive growl of an AV800 at a vintage truck rally is no longer a sound of failure, but a tribute to an era of fearless engineering. In the end, the AEC V8 story serves as both a cautionary tale and the celebration of ambition. It reminds us that not every gamble pays off, but without those gambles, progress would stall. And perhaps that's the true legacy of the AEC V8, a bold step forward that, despite its flaws, continues to inspire. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into Britain's most ambitious lorry engine, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. What other forgotten engineering stories would you like us to explore? Your suggestions could drive our next adventure into history's lost machines. The AV800 story leaves us with an important lesson. Engineering ambition should be celebrated, even in failure for it's often these courageous ventures that inspire future greatness.